So, hello everyone, and I guess this is the first uh, iteration of our Chaos Asia meeting. We just have three folks, uh, but I mean, we're working with whatever we've got right now. So, three good um, ones. Three good ones. Yes, three good ones, and I'm sure we're going to be joined by more people as we go on. Uh, but essentially, today's meeting is just uh, going to be us getting to know each other, uh, given that I really don't know a lot about you both, and y'all probably don't know a lot about me either. So um, I'm going to go ahead and actually share uh, the screen for uh, the sake of this recording, although there's not a lot of agenda items really. <laughs> uh, give, and given that we have very less folks, it's not really going to be a heavily packed agenda. So we'll just I um, I really like the "Are we meeting yet?" little app. Ah, uh, did she? I, I thought she was very. I thought she was just concentrating. I thought it was my internet because it's been acting very strangely. So, I am really sorry. Uh, my Mac doesn't appreciate screen sharing apparently, but I'm gonna retry that. Um, it it just acts up. I'm really sorry. But it should load I thought, now. I thought you were just like concentrating super hard, like you're <laughs> hyper focusing or something. Ah oh, no. <laughs> I didn't realize that. you're present. <laughs> okay. So I think this is visible right now, hopefully. And my Mac's not, you know, showing me stuff that I should not be seeing. But um hopefully this this is gonna be the agenda documentation that we roll through. Uh, but I would really like it if um, all the three of us on the call would actually go around and probably give a, a bit of a self-introduction, a uh, brief one of that, and tell us how your week was in one word. Uh, do I start off? I can do that. I I have a lot of words to say, uh, so I can probably start off. <laughs> So I'm Divya Mohan and I am uh, a principal technical advocate at uh, SUSA. Uh, I also work in the community. I mean, I primarily work in the community and tech evangelism side of things there. And uh, over and above that, I've been involved in like the CNCF ecosystem for a really uh, long time. I wouldn't say long time, but uh, four years is long in open source, I guess. So uh, I've been there and uh, I maintain the docs for the Kubernetes project and a bunch of other projects. And uh, I'm an ambassador, but uh, again, all of these are roles I uh, love to play so that I get a chance to interact with the community and learn how to uh, build better communities and uh, diverse and inclusive ones at that because I feel like there's not enough of that in our world. So that's a bit about me. And my week has been hectic. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the weekend. Um, and that's not new, but my week was hectic. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to the weekend. It was supposed to be a long weekend. But um, yeah, it's not a long weekend anymore. It's just Saturday and Sunday for me. So that's it a bit. That's a bit about. It. So who wants to go next? I can go. Okay, so I'm Elizabeth Barron, even though the Zoom says chaos community, I'm not the folk community. Um, I am the community manager, though, for chaos. So um, if you all have any questions at all about chaos, what it is, what we do, what we're trying to achieve, do not hesitate to ask me, you can hit me up on Slack. Um, anytime I am always around. Well, not always, but I'm, I'm around a lot. So <laughs> you'll eventually get an answer from me. Um, so if we need, actually, if we need, do need help on that first agenda item, the what is chaos, I'm happy to 
throw in some context for you all if you need it. Um, I live in Ohio, actually, in the States, um, just joining to help Divya kind of kick off and make sure that everything goes smoothly for her and, and the group. Um, what else? I uh, have been an open source a really long time. I um, am a community manager for for Chaos. I'm also I work on the All In project, uh, which is run by GitHub. I um, used to work at GitHub for about six years. I've been at Chaos for almost four years. Um, I'm also a nature photographer on the side, so that's kind of my side gig. Because everybody, a lot of people have side gigs, so that's my side gig is nature photography, and that's a little about me. Oh, and your week in one word. I mean, I know you've entered that business. Very busy. <laughs> very busy. <laughs> Just one of those weeks. I like you. I'm looking forward to the weekend. We're taking, I, I have a granddaughter, actually. My daughter is 23 and she has a little girl. Um, and so we are taking her to Disney on Ice on Saturday. Wow. That will be. I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun right now. <laughs> Yeah, it should be fun. She really, really, really likes Frozen and Elsa. So yes, she's very excited. So she'll be turning three in just a little bit in a few weeks. So it's kind of for her birthday too. So it'll be fun. Yay. Um, Helen, do, you cool. go, do you want to go next? Do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Roland. I work at a medical research institute called Lehigh uh, uh, in Australia, in Melbourne. And uh, I do a lot of work with uh, open source, uh, basically writing code, uh, you know, systems from scratch for things like research data management and for, uh, for people who work with genomic pipelines. So there's a lot of different types of, you know, there's DNA, but there's also RNA and proteomics and these other things. And I've got a bit of a background as a research software engineer going around and helping people uh, cobble together workflows or systems that are based off open source. And uh, what I also do is I sort of like a, a side thing is, um, and actually it's the reason why I sort of joined the chaos uh, Slack was when they did the D, I, I do a lot of work in diversity, equity, inclusion. So I've been um, providing a uh, more sophisticated model for doing diversity, equity, inclusion. That's sort of based on intersectionality. And uh, I've been doing that around research software for the last few years. And uh, I'm hoping to publish a paper about it, uh, but uh, I've still got to finish it up and I've done a few presentations around it too. And so when uh, I think Chaos did launch their DEI badges, I had a little bit of a look. I sent around like a, a review. I think I did an introduction and uh, I think people had a look at it, but it was probably a bit too involved. So I'll probably try and write a summary. But uh, it basically was sort of boils down to the fact that, you know, when you look at it from a discourse analysis, it's sort of it's sort of there's a gray area where, you know, are these things useful? What do they really do? And even in the documentation, it sort of highlighted that, hey, these badges aren't gonna necessarily mean you're going to be safe if you're coming in there. And I think that's the real key message that needs to be sort of brought up to the top where you're saying, you know, we have a lot of companies who say that they're wanting to be inclusive. You walk in the door and then maybe after three months or one month or whatever, you really get to see what they're like. And I think what I'd like to see, you know, from a DEI perspective, from any organization perspective, is actually to be able to find out what they're like beforehand, you know, and to be able to navigate that. So I've, I've moved away from this idea of making an organization you know, inclusive or equitable. And I'm moving towards creating a safe space within these dangerous institutions and carving out a safe space for people to come and and um and have a bit of a break. So that's that's where I came in. That's how I came around. And I also 
am the co-chair of the Reset Software Engineering uh, Asia Australia event that's happening in September. And oh. even though I'm part of the RSE Australia New Zealand committee, uh, a good friend of mine, Saranjit, uh, is part of RSE Asia, and I wanted to help her get the word out on RSE Asia as well. So I thought, oh, this is Asia. Cass has probably got a lot of contacts. I can't go to like um, FOSTEM. I can't go to FOS Asia. I can't go to any of those things. So I thought it would be easier to reach out here and, and build community through here. That's me. That's a wonderful introduction. And uh, it was way better than mine where I just said that you could probably see cats jumping around me. But uh it's yeah, fine. I'm talking about Disney on Ice, so <laughs> Roland, <laughs> Roland's like right to, right to yeah. the, the core of it. I love it, Roland. And just as an aside, I know exactly what you're referring to with your um, your feedback on the badging. Um, I know that people have passed it around, but I don't think we've had a chance to really, uh, like you said, dig deep. I think there was just a push to get it, like get the first iteration out. And now we can kind of go back and refine it and polish it and tweak it the way we need to. So um, definitely know what you're talking about. And I definitely appreciate your feedback on that. So thank you so much for taking the time to just write all your thoughts out for us. That's amazing. And we really, really. Yeah, no, that's fine. Because, you know, when I first saw I went, okay, that could be bit tricky and then I was like okay so I went through and did my little like uh, review I've got these uh, 12 discourse analysis points that I use as a basis and then I was looking at uh was it called FOSS backstage or uh, yes, backstage totally. FOSS or Boss and backstage. I think they said that they were they were doing the badging and when I was looking at also the uh the metric spreadsheet too, it was like actually there's some really there's some really nice things in here. So it's always a sort of uh, you know it's a very gray area to try and navigate through. So actually having that means that I'm here. So actually that's a good thing. So definitely, <laughs> you know, and you you're if you're not in our DEI channel, you should be. And we also have just uh, I, I I do I was, but unfortunately the all the meetings are like three o'clock in the morning for me. So yeah. I watched. I, I just get to try and get a chance to watch the the videos from time to time, but uh, it comes a little bit tricky. I've been a bit backed up lately. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, and, but also I wanted to tell you, we also do have a science and research group. So I don't know if you're in that channel as well. And I bet those meetings are probably not going to be super convenient for you either. But they do a lot of work asynchronously because I believe there are some folks in Australia who do attend, not attend the meetings, but who do show up in the Slack. So we've actually been talking about perhaps um, changing the time of that to be more friendly for people since we have people. Global, are... global, global communities are really difficult to <laughs> synchronize, as I'm sure you have no doubt. <laughs> yeah, and I were just talking about that, weren't we? <laughs> just like it's like she said, even just in Asia, like there's just so many time zones to try to be. Yeah, totally get it. So. You've got you got three choices. You can only pick two, basically. <laughs> yeah, and I, I yeah I get that completely. And I, I'm I've been really wanting to try um, something like Loom at some point, but I've never gotten around to it. You know, whether it's like a it's like having a meeting, but you're recording videos as replies to other videos. And I haven't really yeah. tried it yet. So if anyone's ever done that. I'll be curious to know how it how it works out. You have this conversation over a period of time, but you don't have to write it down. Hmm. That sounds like an interesting prospect, and probably we should like try it out at some point. Uh, because I I also had like uh, a lot of Asia Pac chapters um, and uh, meetings in the Asia Pac time zone, which are inaccessible to others, and people often don't get to actually come to any of those because it's either in the middle of the workday or the start of the workday or at the end of the workday. So people are like, hey, we don't get to come. So I'm like, okay, we, we'll try doing something asynchronously, but Luna sounds like a great idea. All right. Um. So I am really curious to, uh, uh, you know, 
understand as to um if there's anyone else in this group i mean i know elizabeth's there and you're there Rol but uh essentially um do you all have any thoughts around any of the agenda items that i have like that was the thing that i was going to discuss today uh but um I, I don't think I need to context set a lot today because both of y'all pretty much know your way around what, what this chapter is about. Uh, but I'm curious if you think any of the other next steps that I've outlined here makes sense or if y'all have anything else to add um, as members who've actually shown up for the first meeting. I think it's, I think it looks good. Uh, I'm sure because you've got this in the things if anyone wanted to add it or make suggestions they could add it in later on but i think it's a good good start for sure and it's nice to have a time zone that i can uh turn up and say hello to yeah that was the intention to be really honest like i wanted to this is like really it's not really early it's just like i got out of bed which is very evident in my face but that's fine um but you know, people can join in. Like, if I keep it a little later, it'll be really late for you. I know that. Uh, and it'll be um, smack in the middle of the day for um, some of the other folks. Uh, so this was the easiest time I could work with. Uh, but that's that's really what I wanted. Like, I wanted participation from as broad an audience as possible. Um, and hopefully more audience to be involved as we go along the way. Um I don't know if we should, I think we should wait for more people to actually uh, get started with the next steps because I'm uh, pretty sure people might have other thoughts around the next steps um, since a lot of them might be joining in new um, and there might be other folks like uh, Yehui and other folks who are already involved and they might have thoughts around how to go ahead with this as well. Uh, but yeah, I think this Sounds is good. pretty much it. Yeah, this is pretty much it from my side. I really don't have anything. I just wanted to set the context for today and actually have a meeting. Um, but this is this is what I aim for, uh, especially like getting more people involved and uh, then streamlining the efforts. Um, I'm waiting for. It was good, Divya. It was yeah. good. I appreciate you doing it. It was definitely worthwhile from my point of view. Thank you. That's very kind of you. So, yeah, Elizabeth, I think I'm pretty done with the recording bits here. I don't think we have anything uh, other than this, other than the introductions that we've just had. And uh, uh, because all of us are familiar with chaos, I don't think we need to reiterate that. Um, if there's anyone else who comes in, we can obviously, you know, uh, and reintroduce chaos to them um, and get started with the next steps. But uh, for today, I think we're good. Um, one quick question for you all. Would it be, do you, okay, do you have context of how uh, the Chaos Asia chapter came to be, or, or do you know that already? Do you already have that context? I have a little bit of context because I sp uh, spoke to Ruth um, last okay. week or the week before that, but I don't have the entire context to be really, really very honest with you. I have some of it because Ruth's um, been coordinating with the previous lead. Uh, so she gave me a bit of context and I'm also setting up a call with um, uh, Anna Geminis, uh from the OSPO side of things to yeah. see if there's some other collaborative efforts between the two groups to, um, you know, further that area of um, working as well for the group. But that's pretty much it. Like, I don't have like a lot of context, not as much as you for sure, but yeah, I have some of it. Well, I can, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Um, and then if you have questions, I can answer.